Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Now you can get Jason's Creating Wealth in Today's Economy home study course. All the knowledge and education revealed in a nine-hour day of the Creating Wealth Boot Camp, created in a home study course for you to dive into at your convenience. For more details, go to jasonhartman.com. My pleasure to welcome Karen Chu. She is the founder of Good Job Brain, and she hosts a very successful newer podcast about trivia and quizzes and so forth. In fact, she is the podcast host and the quiz master. So Karen, welcome. How are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. I feel Good. like I should uh, start off with the with the trivia question. Or oh something. my gosh, don't do that to me. I'm terrible at that. But okay, go for <laughs> it. I'm I'm going to embarrass myself right on my own show. <laughs> start off with some trivia. That's fine. Go for it. In a bag of M and M's, currently, what is the most popular color? Well, I don't know if it, there are the most of them in there, but the one people talk about the most would be green, right? Green is, green is uh, I think, the, probably the, the less frequent color, but the answer is actually blue. Blue makes up 24% in each bag of, standard bag of M&M's. Well, now I can sleep easy. <laughs> I know <laughs> very, that. Very, very important. I, I would have no idea. I would have, I would have said, like, the most popular color I would have thought would be, like, brown or something, like, chocolatey colored. That's what, yeah, that's what I thought, too, and blue is, blue is a newer color, too, so that kind of that blows my mind. Well, see, folks, we're starting this this talk here, <laughs> getting right down to business, knowing what M and M's yep. are. We've got the quiz master. You know, I bet you drive people crazy with your uh, trivia and quizzing <laughs> and so forth. Huh? You know, I, I I try not to. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's very hard, but I feel like I just like I just want people to like know more weird things and, and kind of share them with everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, hey, let's talk about, so you, you have uh, quite a bit of experience in podcasting. You were podcasting a few years back. Maybe, well, let's start from the beginning. When did you first get into podcasting? Oh, boy, let's see. I think maybe it was back in 2005. Okay, kind of in the, in the semi-early days. That's when I started yeah. about there, about that range. And how did you start and what was your first show? The first show I was on was called Legendary Thread, and it was a World of Warcraft, very popular MMO video game. And I was on that show uh, for, for a couple of years. Um, and at that point, it's interesting because video game podcasting kind of blew up. And it's kind of oxymoronic because video game is such a visual form of media. And... But but having an audio podcast, having some people you know on a panel talking about video games was really really popular, and it kind of it's it's really strange because you're talking about these these games that you really have to experience and you have to see. Right, and, right. But you're talking about them. yeah, yeah. That 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 is interesting. Uh, I've got to ask you, Karen, what does MMO mean? You said MMO video game. What's that? Massive multiplayer online. Oh, okay. So it's a it's a video game that's syndicated over the internet, so many people can play at the same time, right? Is that basically the yep, idea? Yep. Okay, great. I'm no expert on video games at all. 
Yeah, you know, that's interesting because I remember my favorite TV show that is now off the air a few years ago was the show 24 with Kiefer Sutherland. And there was a, you know, there were lots of podcasts. Well, I don't know lots, but there were several podcasts around the show that were audio podcasts that would just talk about and comment on the show. And of course, it's a visual show. You know, it's a television show. Yet audio podcasts, oddly and ironically, were popular about the show. So just like the video game thing, that's that's interesting. I think definitely there is some sort of sense of, um, I, I want to, I've played this game where I watch the show and I, you know, I really just want to talk to other people who have the same passion as I do about this thing. And, you know, you can't really count on a lot of your friends or social circles to have the same interests. And I think that's why a lot of these hobby podcasts kind of blew up because now, you know, I'm, if, if I were a huge 24 nut, I could listen to other huge 24 nuts talk about, you know, what they think, their theories, especially with games too. It's just like, oh, I want to hear what other people are saying about it. And you kind of build this a friendship almost through listening to these podcasts. They're like, wow, these people are like me. And this is the way I would talk about games or TV shows or movies on, on in an audio format. It's really weird. Yeah, it really is. Awesome. You know what my theory about that is, is that the audio format, I, I do both video and audio podcasting and I like audio better. It's so much easier to produce, first of all, but as a <laughs> consumer, I like audio better. And I think what's happening with video game or podcasts about television shows, uh, podcasts about visual things, I think what's happening is that when people get up off the couch and they start moving around, they use the audio format in their cars, at the gym, while taking a mm-hmm. walk, while walking the dog, hiking, whatever. So hopefully they're, they're getting off the couch at some point, and that's a good thing, and they can take it with them into other environments where they're not required to watch. So I think there's definitely something to that. Tell us about your why people should podcast, why you got into podcasting, and I know that you haven't tried to monetize your newest podcast yet. However, you did raise more money than you expected, which is very interesting off the Kickstarter website. So congratulations to you on that. Again, this is very small and organic. And what we're trying to do is just highlight different avenues of podcasting. Some people do it as a business. They want to make a lot of money with it. Some people do it for a cause. They want to spread the word or they just have a hobby like you. So give us your whole background in it and and why people would want to do it. I think, like you said, I think podcast is a very convenient and very easy format. And I I like to think it's kind of the multitasker's dream. And you can listen to a podcast and you can be driving down the road or walking around or, you know, at the gym, whereas you can't really do that with a video format. You know, you can selectively, I guess, tune in and out. And that's kind of the, the beauty of it. It's just so easy. And so I think I think podcast definitely is uh, within the hobby section, which is kind of my, I guess, jurisdiction or, or sector, um, does build a very strong uh, relationship with listeners and with people of whatever community you're in. And so I, I have experience in the video game community, and the, this podcast, Good Job Brain, is kind of there's there's a little bit of overlap. It's with uh, the trivia community, so we have all of our trivia pursuit players and all of our Jeopardy players, and it's still it's still kind of a game, and it's not something that everybody um, is into. And so it's really nice to find listeners who are willing to listen to your podcast because most likely they think the same way as you do. <laughs> they're as they're as nutty as you are. <laughs> like, like. So basically, this whole idea of of our little podcast. You know, me and uh, my friends who are on the podcast as, as co-hosts, we all play at a, a pub trivia. You know, you go in a bar, there's a quiz master, they ask a couple of questions, and you have some beers and answer questions. And within a blink of an eye, three years have passed. We've been playing every week at pub trivia for three years, and we love it. It's, it's our time to socialize. It's our time to, you know, answer questions or solve puzzles, and we love it. And so I thought, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we try to bring this to everybody? You know, we leave, we live in a, a pretty metropolitan area, and there's pub trivias all around. But, you know, like, what if we share this, our joy of pub trivia with everybody else? Maybe they don't have access to pub trivia. And so that was kind of how the idea began. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, so with your new podcast, the Good Job Brain podcast, 
uh, where you do the trivia and the quizzes and so forth. You decided you wanted to do this idea, and you wanted to buy some equipment. I mean, this is uh-huh. grassroots, <laughs> and it's exciting <laughs> that it's grassroots. And you're, you're only seven episodes into this. This is a pretty new thing. Very new. So what did you do? You decided... You're going to go to the Kickstarter website, which is a website where people can raise money for ventures and so forth. And tell us a little bit about how that works and how it worked with you. Oh, boy. I am, well, obviously I'm a big trivia nut, which means I like reading and researching about things. And so when I had the idea of, like, maybe, you know, I could have gotten equipment, but, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to see if, you know, Kickstarter could help. So when I was uh, starting or when I launched uh, the Kickstarter thing, um, I did so much research. It's almost like almost like manic crazy research. I went through Kickstarter projects very, very thoroughly. I looked at all the other podcasts, you know, the Kickstarter projects. I looked at the local projects within San Francisco, and I looked at, you know, failed projects as well. And I tried to pinpoint what did they do right on Kickstarter and what might have been not that successful. And so I kind of aggregated all of this information be like, okay, so what do I have to do to make sure people will you know, believe in, in my project and, and give me money, basically? And so <laughs> that's what I did. I, it was kind of crazy, and it kind of all paid off. You know, I, I learned a lot of things. I learned that people love video. People love, you know, really catchy graphics. And, and I tried to just make the Kickstarter page as fun as I think my product would be to people basically, and it was it was very successful, and I was I was really really happy about it. And you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't trying to um, get too much money. Um, I just thought you know the, the amount that I had was uh, you know, I calculated everything. What would I need for domain hosting, for uh, audio equipment, for room rentals if I need it? And I had a list, and I would be like, okay, well this is this is the, my goal amount. And yeah, and it went over. It was it was very awesome. So so actually... you 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 tried to raise twenty five hundred dollars, and you ended mm-hmm. up raising thirty eight hundred dollars, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Okay. Now That's you know so, someone wanting to get into podcasting though. You can really do this with almost no money, can't you? I mean, you did it sort of a more professional way. Some people think, mm-hmm. oh, I've got to go out and buy ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 worth of professional-grade audio equipment, and you don't. It is amazing how no, inexpensively you can do this. super easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the thing is, I've been on podcasts before, but I've never really started my own. And, and when you start, it does seem a little bit daunting because you're like, well, what kind of mics do I need? What, you know, do I need a mixer? And where does all this live, like online? And so really, I, I feel like, you know, if people are interested, just do a quick crash course, read about the, how to start off a podcast, and you realize that it's, it's actually really simple once you get all your ducks in a row and, and your facts straight. And so in terms of equipment, yeah, I mean, I, I went on Amazon and I read a lot of the reviews and, and seeing what other podcasters are using. And that's how I, you know, got all of my equipment. But it is super, super simple. And, you know, I, I went on Kickstarter getting, trying to get this funded mostly because, you know, I, I had a vision of what I wanted, a very, very clear vision. It's like, well, I need this and this and this. And I, you know, wanted to make sure that I factor all of those, those in for um, my Kickstarter amount, basically. And, and but, with Kickstarter, how do you pay the person back or what do you do? Is it a joint venture when you start to monetize this show? Which, by the way, has some pretty good ratings right out of the gate. And we'll talk <laughs> about that in a moment, which I think the listeners are going to be amazed at what they're going to hear here. But you, do you pay them back? Is it a loan? Is it a joint venture where you give them a cut or how does that work? Kickstarter works it purely, it's very friendly. And basically, the business model is you have a project and you have the goal amount that you're trying to raise. And pretty much everything, all the money that comes in is almost by charity, by volunteer, uh, by, by users who want to back your project. And they don't get a percentage of, you know, maybe the business you're building. You know, all they get are what we call backer rewards and they're usually like oh you know a thank you card or a t-shirt it's kind of prize based so the spirit of kickstarter is you know i support your cause and your project here's some money and maybe i'll get a cool prize back but that, that's pretty much it you know they i guess the real prize is for the whole project to get funded and, and be launched sure sure you know, and, and, and and so how many people 
I, you know, and I don't mean to make this conversation about Kickstarter, but just to, you know, I think oh, a lot no, of people no. are, I think a lot of people so are curious about it. How many people added that, how many people donated to add up to that $3,800 number? We had exactly a hundred people. So 38 bucks a piece them, on average, right? Yeah. Yeah. None of them was my mom or, or other, or my family members. I mean, nepotism does, does help, but, uh, a hundred people from all over the world. It's it's kind of it, it's kind of amazing. We have um, someone from Norway, and someone from Hong Kong, and it's just you know all over the world, uh, people chipped in, and it's it's really really cool. Really fascinating. That's amazing. I mean, do you give the the investors credit on your show or anything like that, or or they get a T-shirt? <laughs> so yeah, so with a Kickstarter, you can set different uh, monetary amounts. You can set to like, you know, a $5 tier and for $5, you get a thank you card. Uh, but if you have like the $25 tier, maybe you'll get a t-shirt and it kind of works that way. Obviously, most of the backers I've seen are, are between four Pixar projects are between $15 and $25. But there are some people who, you know, donate 500 or, you know, or more. And so the different tiers have different uh, rewards um, that the Kickstarter project, I guess, manager or, or person who's starting it will define. And for our Kickstarter, it's, it's actually pretty fun. We have um, these stickers and then we have thank you cards. We also give them a chance to, um, you know, submit their own questions or their own topics. And we'll actually do a show uh, based on their suggestions if they're a, a backer. Um, so that's, it's an interesting kind of prize. Yeah, it really is. Okay, back to podcasting. So t- you're, okay. you started this one in, in what, December, right? So you've been going about four and a half months? I think we actually start. well, the Kickstarter started in December, but we actually started recording, I believe, maybe in February. Oh, my God, that wasn't even that long ago. Wow, but... yeah. So you've been going <laughs> two and a half months or so, something like that. You've got mm-hmm. just seven seven little episodes out, and your episodes are, are they generally around 40 minutes each? Yeah, I try to, I try to get them to around 45 to 50 minutes. Um, less than an hour is my goal. Right. Okay. And so, so seven episodes, 45 to 50 minutes. Tell us about your experience with downloads, interaction from listeners. You've got a hundred, I think 157 ratings on iTunes already for such a, such a new show. That's really incredible. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. What's been your whole experience? What are your stats like? Share some metrics with us, if you would. Um, so we have seven seven episodes, and each one ranging uh, 45 to 50 minutes. Our ratings, you know, I, I really have no context to, to kind of the iTunes rating uh, world. So, you know, I, I'm so thankful that you're telling me that I'm doing a good job. Um, you di- you didn't even know, huh? I had to tell you that. <laughs> no. I, I had to look it up. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. No idea. Yeah. We, I think we just got over 100K in unique downloads. Wow. That, and again, that I have no amazing. contact. Yeah. It, it, actually, it's, it's kind of, uh, I would think, I would credit iTunes uh, for the big numbers because we got featured on uh, the iTunes podcast uh, home screen within week three or third or fourth episode. And that really, that really made a jump. And, you know, that was really humbling because, you know, I, what I believe is the iTunes people kind of pick their favorites they do. to feature. Yeah, they do. They and, do. and they featured our, our little show. So that's how, I mean, folks, are you listening to that? That's how some little show that can get just started, basically, you know, it's kind of like the garage uh, concept, right? The startup in the garage. You use Kickstarter. You didn't even have to do all that, but you did. And so, mm-hmm. you know, you funded it with $3,800, but people could do this. If they have a computer and a Skype line, they can basically do podcasting, okay? All depends just how you want to do it. And and, and then you, you published a few episodes. You got featured on the iTunes homepage and boom, 157 <laughs> ratings, over 100,000 downloads of the show, unique downloads, in seven short episodes in two and a half months. Now, I'm a business person. You don't sound like you are, okay? And, and it sounds like this is just a hobby and something you love. But I would be chomping at the bit to monetize this right now. What do you think really? about that? You're not doing any monetization, are you? you no, not yet. And actually, to be, to be perfectly honest, and I don't even know if I should say this or not. Go ahead. But, um, for our Kickstarter funds, I haven't even used 
you know, used a third of that money. I, I would believe that. Yeah, you've only used, what, $1,200 or so, right? Yeah, just, right. just with equipment, and equipment isn't even that that pricey. Um, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of sitting on it. You know, maybe if if in the future we do you know more elaborate things, you know, I can I kind of dig into dig into my Kickstarter funding money. But yeah, I mean, I haven't really used that much money. I haven't really thought about monetizing it, though. Though the idea is very interesting, I do you know want to see and want to hear different ways to monetize outside of, you know, the usual kind of um, audio ads that's kind of spliced in. And I was, you know, I'm really curious to see um, in the future or, you know, upcoming months to see, you know, what are some newer ways to monetize outside of outside of that. Yeah, well, you know, and I'll just give you a couple of thoughts on that. I'm doing a, uh, a a podcast product teaching people how to monetize their shows and so forth. But of course, you can sell advertising. And to, to make any real money with advertising, you have to have a fairly big audience, but you, you're on the right track for sure. But you know, the other thing is have some sort of back end business or back end product. And so mm-hmm. maybe out of the show, I mean, all these great ideas are spurred on on, on running a show. Maybe you'll invent your own game. Maybe it'll be a software-based game or an online game or a physical game, or maybe a book comes out of it or a, a set of quizzes or who knows? There's so, It's just endless, it's the possibilities. Like, it's like you're reading my mind. It, you're totally reading my mind. One of, one of the ideas that I'm, I'm kind of romantically, you know, toying around in my head is to um, make some sort of tablet activity book kind of on, on Apple newsstand or, you know, some sort of digital book that has a bunch of interesting trivia, some little quizzes, and just, you know, filled with different things to do, and just very motley, a motley crew of uh, weird articles. And, and, you know, maybe that will go somewhere. But at, at this point, yeah. Yeah, and certainly I didn't even mention probably the biggest and maybe most fitting one for your your topic area, an app. I mean, an app for the mm-hmm. iPad, the iPhone, the Droid marketplace. It's just amazing what you can do. It really is. So that's that's awesome. Well, give us any other thoughts you have about the show and, and give out the website, the exact URL, if you would, too. So the, the show, Good Job Brain, it's a, what we call it kind of the pub trivia quiz show and offbeat uh, trivia show. It's at www.goodjobbrain, one word, dot com. And you... I'm just kind of floored. I'm kind of overwhelmed that this little idea that I had with my friends has been so well received. And that's, that's the real joy out of it is that a lot of people write in and a lot of people comment or rate. And I I, I hear, I hear them like they're totally people like me. We love trivia. We're the types of people who, you know, if Jeopardy is on TV, you'll yell out the answers. <laughs> and, 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 and it's so nice to find that kinship uh, with people, people like that because that's such a big part of my life. And also, I mean, I just, I'm just so curious. I just love talking about how the world is and recovering different facts. And, you know, I just learned recently that, um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Speedy, Speedy was the mascot of McDonald's before Ronald McDonald. And I totally didn't know that. And it was just kind of, it's so... I'm learning all kinds of new stuff interviewing you, you know? (laughs) Now I know that Blue M&M's and Speedy, I never even knew Speedy existed. That's amazing. Yeah. (laughs) And I I just love learning about about this this world we live in. It's just filled with so many different and weird things. And, and, you know, and I'm so happy that, you know, my group of friends and co-hosts on the podcast are kind of, you know, we share the same passion. And so at, at this point, all I can say is, I'm overwhelmed, and I'm so humbled uh, by everybody, and it's it's great. I mean, obviously, I have a lot of hate mail, but, you know, I feel like if... Why, if you, why do you have hate kind mail? Of, For trivia? Uh, people, <laughs> you're not talking yeah, people politics. Think, <laughs> people think we're boring. <laughs> people think, you know, it's like, you know, I don't care about, I don't care about blue men blue M&Ms or, or whatever, but it's fine. I mean, uh, the, the, where hey, is the internet hey, generation? Well, I, I've, just got a, I've just got a comment on that, okay? First of all, why are they listening? <laughs> if, <laughs> I don't know. Why would they bother to listen to your show, make the decision that you're boring, and then take the next step of, of bothering to send you an email saying you're boring? That's just unbelievable. Very, very <laughs> okay. strange part of human nature. Feedback but, is feedback. Yeah, no, I know. I tell you, with when you look at successful brands, uh, especially personal brands, the brand really needs to repel 
as many people as it attracts because a middle of the road sort of brand doesn't really go very far. Controversy or, or at least people are engaging, they're having an opinion. And that actually is a good sign. It really is. Yeah. So, yeah. So don't let that dissuade you at all. That's nothing to worry about. You know what? That's, that's something that you, you've touched upon. And, you know, I, I kind of want to talk about that really quickly, which is the brand thing. And that's since Kickstarter or, you know, when I was thinking about this idea, you know, I, I worked in marketing and I really thought, you know, I have to get the brand right, the attitude right, the voice right. And, you know, I, I didn't really think about this until you said it, but it is. I, I'm trying to attract the people I want to attract and, uh, you know, maybe repel the people that I, I don't want, you know, to, to have, you know, to, to experience my brand. And I didn't really think about that. And I think a lot of the success is probably from that, too, because very early on, I was like, this is our voice. This is what we're doing. You know, uh, these are our graphics. This is kind of the style we're going for. And uh, we carried it through, whether if it's on the podcast or on the website, we really try to stay true to that weird, quirky, fun, kind of academic, but very, but very lighthearted kind of voice. And I'm very glad, happy that you, you pointed that out. That's, that's great. Yeah, no. Well, keep up the good work. And thanks for coming on and sharing your success and your experience with us. Very, very interesting what you're doing. And just keep it up. I, I, I can imagine by the time you're up at 30, 40 episodes, you might crack a million downloads by then pretty easily at the rate you're going. So wow. you know, good topic. And, <laughs> Thank and you. think about ways to monetize your show. Okay. <laughs> I will. That's my homework. All right. Take care, Karen. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about some cool new investor software, there's a show for that. If you want to learn why Rome fell, Hitler rose, and Enron failed, there's a show for that. If you want to know about property evaluation technology on the iPhone, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know how to make millions with mobile homes, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.